the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff at midnight, the night before airstrikes were to begin in the no-fly zone in Syria. General Dempsey then, head of the Joint Chiefs, went to Obama and said, you cannot do this. He backed off. That was later admitted. And the fact that alternative patriot media exposed that we were doing this evil thing in Syria, our military had a close-to-rebellion level event of just free speech that caused the globalists to blink. Kerry's screw-ups caused them to blink. And now that gave Russia the chance, uh, repeating basically domestic info we're putting out and others, to then put the globalists in check uh, in Syria. And the establishment realizes that this show and others has a direct communication with the U.S. military, and it's really scaring the establishment right now. Yeah, we've had a, a rebellion within the Navy pilot ranks, of which I was a member uh, boy, the story about them trying to get permission to hit high-value targets and uh, and them taking an hour, they were bingo fuel, meaning they got to go back to the ship before they could attack. I mean, this happened time and again. The Navy pilots realized, hey, this war is being sabotaged just like it was for us in Vietnam. Go over that a little bit because we know the Iraqi government's proven, others have, that our military is not allowed to target ISIS or any of these other scumbags. And, and, and again, that's... That's why we've had the former head of defense intelligence go public and say, no, we were ordered to back al-Qaeda. We were ordered to back ISIS. This was a conscious order. We have the deputy director of the CIA going public two weeks ago. Are they covering their butts or are they openly rebelling against this uh, tyranny? They're not really opening rebellion. You can't do that in the military. The military is ruthless. It's filled with higher level of yesmanship at the highest level of generals and admirals. They will crucify any officer that really tries to uh, do a rebellion. But that isn't stopping people from leaking through the alternative media, the stories that we had from Navy pilots saying, you know, hey, we're being sabotaged here with slow response times and, and these other things that you just quoted. This is a leaking war, but not an open rebellion. I don't think you're going to see that. It's not possible in today's yes man military. Well, I agree with you, but I'm saying this is as close as you get to that right now. Yes, right. It's as it's as good as they can, and and it's a the leaking war is a very effective war because the the alternative media is big enough. These stories do get out, and uh, these people are having to react to this. So I think the globalists are in a major quandary. Their entire agenda for the Middle East is on the rocks right now. They are going to have to establish some new way of. Uh, uh, of getting rid of Syria. And of course, Syria was headed to be a disaster. If you let ISIS take over the Yihadis, it would be a bloodbath. It would be forever. I mean, just like Libya. Libya is not stable to this day, and there shows no sign of stability. How would so, our elites, I mean, because I understand China and Russia are bad, and, and so you can create arguments to do Machiavellian things for the greater good, but that always leads into corruption. But such conscious evil to put al-Qaeda, al Nusra. ISIS in charge, blowing up every church, chopping people's heads off, murdering families. I mean, these really are bad people. How did our elite get to the point that they thought they could get away with an Al-Qaeda proxy army taking over the whole Middle East? I mean, they've got to know the genie's out of the bottle. People now understand that our government's capable of this. Yes, you know, it's, what's out of the bottle uh, is the fact that you've unleashed on the world a bunch of jihadists that you've created, you've armed, you've given the propaganda reason, you've created the hatred towards America that gins up all of this, even though America's doing this. Um, this can't be put back in the bottle. That's refugee situation in Europe, for example, is turning into a nightmare of, uh, of chaos and of riots and of destruction of public property which is being very much covered up by the media. And your website, InfoWars, is putting out that information as well as other people in, in Europe. WorldAffairsBrief.com is exposing it. Yes, that's right. I mean, it's just a horrendous. But, you know, there's this multicultural agenda that is on the rocks because people are in up in arms in Europe. Stop these refugees. And uh, I think the globalists are at a crucial point as we speak here. Every one of their agendas have backfired. They've gone overboard. And I hate to say this, but we owe it to Russia from stopping this agenda right now. Is this and, probably uh, the biggest unraveling of the globalist agenda we've seen since Bretton Woods? I mean, uh, is this not one of the just most spectacular spectacles we've ever seen? 
Well, Bretton Woods was actually a success. It's what No, I know. That's what I'm saying. Since the launch of this current system, is this not one of the most spectacular train wrecks? It is, and it could even get worse for them if Russia and Hezbollah and Iranian Revolutionary Guard are able to actually defeat ISIS. I mean, the U.S. will literally be lap the laughingstock of the international community. They will no longer be able to say our military intervention is going to provide the excuse that it has in, in the past. And that's going to be a real problem for global because they, they depend on, on uh, continual intervention in order to create conflict and then to dictate the solution. But now Russia's intervening, so they're dictating the solution, and it's the correct one. It's going to defeat ISIS. And in the process, you're defeating U.S. and British intelligence. Unbelievable. So... It is a giant train wreck. I agree with Joel Scowls, and he brings amazing clarity. You'll find more of that clarity at worldaffairsbrief.com. I think you're insane if you don't visit that site every day. And, of course, infowars.com. Joe Biggs is going to pop in from the uh, Bloomberg anti-gun rally in Austin. Then we'll go back to Joel Scowls and, and take your calls. Stay with us. But as the war machine continues turning, it doesn't matter if we have 11,000 gun deaths a year, most of them suicide, the others gang related. What, 167 people on average in the last decade are killed in mass shootings every year. 167. White tailed deer kill almost 300 a year jumping in front of your car. But they create the perception that gun crime's up and the perception that owning a gun causes the problem. Then they advertise gun free zones for ISIS to hit or for a mentally ill person to attack. Like it's an option, like suicide by cop. The more they do shows about suicide by cop, the more people go, well, I don't want to kill myself. I'll go out and pull a gun on cops and my family will get a settlement. Well, it's happened. 20 injured in shooting at Oregon Community College, shooter in custody officials say. We're going to have Joe Biggs and Jakari Jackson. The rally's over, the anti-gun rally. They were at UT trying to ban guns. Uh, on campus because the state's passing a law to arm people on campus. And here's another example. UCC in Oregon has a total gun ban. We should put a story out on this because I looked it up. Approximately 20 people been injured, 15 dead in a shooting at a community college in Douglas County, Oregon, according to an official. The injured includes a woman who was shot in the chest, said Chris Boyce, a Douglas County commissioner. The shooting began within the last 30 minutes of the UCC college. The shooter is down and in custody. We will continue to update as that unfolds, KTLA 5. Our prayers go out because, hey, even if it's a very low number of people killed in mass shootings, despite they advertised to mentally ill people to do it, still, one person dies, it is a tragedy. If 5 million children get aborted, it's a tragedy, or 55 million aborted, it's a tragedy, too. So all lives matter, black lives matter, white lives matter, little kids' lives matter, old people's lives matter, veterans' lives matter, police officers' lives matter, Catholics' lives matter, Islamic people's lives matter, atheists' lives matter. And this will be used now to come after our guns. We know there's a huge new offensive to get the guns. And I was just saying earlier today, I hope they don't stage something. Some of these things are real. A lot of these, like the Aurora shooting, and I don't say this lightly. I don't have time to go over the evidence. I mean, folks, that was as phony as a $3 bill. You just put somebody on amnesic drugs, hop them up, put them in a car for the cops to find them, go in, shoot the people, and then the patsy doesn't even know what happened. Sirhan, Sirhan. Now, the police report in um, L.A. on RFK said he didn't shoot him and was drugged. And I've talked to detectives that were on the case. And it's come out the CIA was there that day. I'm not going to digress off into that. It's just it's very easy to stage this stuff. But there's another form of staging it that's culturally advertising mass shootings then makes them a reality. I'm done talking about that. We'll have Joe Biggs and Jakari Jackson in studio with Leon, uh, Leon McAdoo. Leon McAdoo. Leanne McAdoo uh, coming up in the fourth hour of Overdrive today. Joel Skousen of worldaffairsbrief.com is our guest. Uh, we've got callers loaded uh, from Tanner to Tom to Steve to Chase to Zach. We'll get to your quick questions or comments. And then, of course, it's on the same subject. And then Joel Skousen can comment on those or you can comment on those. But, Joel, I've been asking a lot of the questions today, amazing answers we've been getting from you. 
Overall, if the globalists are being handed all these big setbacks, I agree with you. They tend to double down in their hubris and arrogance. Uh, but how do you double down with other nuclear powers? Uh, what if Israel starts striking Russian targets or kills Russians? Uh, you said you don't think the Russians would 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 would, would want to be involved in that. But once committed, couldn't this escalate really quickly and we wake up? And there's a bigger regional war. I mean, as you know, this is how World War One, World War Two started, is with these incremental ratcheting up. Am I right to say the world has reached almost a Cuban missile crisis level situation right now? Not yet, Alex. Um, it's very, very clear that Russia is being very careful. Uh, if they really wanted to go full bore into this, they put their own special forces troops uh, into Syria uh, because they're much, much better than even Hezbollah and the Revolutionary Guards. Um, so I don't think that they want to risk because they're not ready for war yet. I mean, as I pointed out many times in the World Affairs Brief, Russia and China still aren't going to have their top-of-the-line weapon systems in production until 2021, 22, and 23, and 24. And so it's going to take, I mean, that's the reason that uh, Putin is doing a stealth war in Ukraine rather than in-your-face invasion. Uh, he's taking back these uh, um, former Soviet states little by little, not enough to, uh, to antagonize or force the West to confront him. And I think that's the reason why he's not committed to troops. You know, the Russian press says we don't want another Afghanistan, but the Russian hierarchy doesn't care about democracy or what public opinion is. They do what they want to do. And so the reason for not sending troops into Syria has to be because they don't want to have a major war provocation with the West or Israel. But as I say, I pointed out that Israel may well be uh, the the spearhead for the globals to try to get another angle into Syria. Oh, another their defense minister said they're going to act. They just didn't yeah. say exactly how. No, that's right. And... You know, there's a difference between what they say and what they do. But clearly, the Israelis, I think, are the only card left that the globalists have to uh, to change this uh, situation in Syria. That right now, Russia is controlling and the U.S. can't, can't do anything. And you'll notice that the U.S. isn't even doing airstrikes right now because the Russians are in the airspace. And there's a real tremendous uh, conflict there between airplanes. So... The U.S. war on ISIS is basically on hold until they figure out what to do. But as you said, it was never really a real war. They just blow up an old truck or something. It That's was completely right. staged. That's right. They were always going after little tiny targets, uh, individuals. Yes, you would kill, but you won't. Don't. You couldn't get permission to attack any of the headquarters, and Russia just hit some of those headquarters. So they're going to be able to effectively. Uh, diminish uh, ISIS very quickly. I think you're going to see the Russian escalation happen. They're talking about coordinating with the West. I just don't uh, see the West happening uh, or, or doing that because the, West, the more the West coordinates with Russia, the more they would have to show their hand that, no, we don't want to hit this particular target. No, you shouldn't hit this. They're going to be having to tell the Russians not to hit targets that they want to preserve, and they don't want to get away with that. So I just don't think we're going to see coordination. I think Russia is going to take the handle. I think uh, ISIS is going to be severely diminished. And sure. the whole globalist agenda in the Middle East is sunk now, especially since Iran has got this agreement with the U.S. And they're going to continue to build militarily, and the U.S. isn't going to be able to touch them. Uh, because what about Saudi Arabia? They obviously have a huge weapons platform, but uh, aren't too good, at least historically, in wars. Look at what's happening in Yemen right now. But... Uh, their government head and a, and a bunch of their top princes, as you know, came out yesterday and threatened Russia and said, uh, do not enter into this area or we're going to escalate our military response. They didn't say specifically what they were going to do, but Russia just responded by massive airstrikes just, just you know, 12 hours later. So I don't think Russia is being intimidated by Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a paper tiger militarily. You look at Yemen they can't beat this ragtag Yemeni's army with all their airstrikes, and they certainly can't go up against anybody really trained in air-to-air -air combat. The, um, they get sh I don't care if they have F-16s or not, they're going to get shot out of the sky by the Russians. So I think this is just a paper threat from Saudi Arabia. I think Israel's the only capable military on the globalist side that could intervene uh, 
but it's uh, I think even the Israelis would think twice about going up against the Russians. So this is a mega bold move.